as the instructor suggests, they try to start slowly and brake smoothly. The rear brake should be applied first, however, both brakes play a role in efficient stopping. After a few tries, they get the feel for it. The students try for a few emergency stops. The time to learn is now. A few slow turns. Mike, like most other people, has graduated from the bicycle. He understands how to shift his weight into the turns. Mike tries out man-made horsepower. He notes that the gearing is different from a bicycle. Also, he has to propel the moped, which is at least twice as heavy. But pedaling is good for your health, and it can be of help to the engine when going up a steep hill. Mike intends to pedal some distance a couple of times a week to strengthen his legs. The dealer tells the group to practice some more until they feel comfortable and confident. Then they are ready to drive in traffic. Local regulations permit the use of mopeds on most surface roads. Freeways, expressways or turnpikes are always excluded. So is driving on sidewalks. Avoid fast, high-density traffic. The mental computer of many car drivers is as yet not programmed to mopeds. The most important thing is to keep yourself visible. Leave the lights on even during the day. Wear brightly colored clothing and reflective tape on headgear. Moped visibility is important in daylight and even more so at night. Head and tail lights will protect the driver. Reflectors will make him even more visible. Wear clothing with reflective stripes. Turn signals are especially important at night. In the city, mopeds will often move with the traffic. Mike follows the wheel path of the car ahead and drives somewhat to the right of center. It makes him well visible. Oil drips from cars tend to accumulate in the center of traffic lanes and could cause a skid. Keep a distance from the vehicle ahead of you. Distance is your best brake. If the car behind seems to crowd you, just let it pass. Learn to give in. Turn signals should be given clearly and well in advance of change of direction. Give stop signals way in advance of the intended stop. Directional lights are advisable. The driver can keep both hands on the brakes. Also, when changing lanes or turning, don't completely rely on your rear view mirror. There is a blind spot. Move your head for a quick look to make sure all is clear. When traffic makes it necessary to drive close to parked cars, watch for suddenly opening car doors. Be ready to stop. Assist your motor by pedaling when making a left turn in a dense traffic situation. Railroad crossings, for obvious reasons, should be approached at about a 90 degree angle. Mike keeps his eyes open for moped hazards such as storm drains, drainage grates, and potholes. In order to avoid glass and other obstacles, Mike never drives too close to the curb. On wet roads, slow down. Avoid sudden turns or quick braking. The slick surface could cause a spill. The same precautions have to be taken in rainy weather.
And speaking of weather, when it's cold, wear protective clothing, especially gloves, to keep your hands warm and nimble. Mike never drives between cars. One of them may not see or hear him. One needs both hands for driving a moped. Never carry anything in your hands. Package carriers are available for this purpose. Make sure not to cover the taillight. Sorry, no room for a passenger, unless you have one of the few mopeds equipped for a second rider. Groups of moped drivers should ride in single file. Driving abreast invites accidents. Gasoline is an energy power package that has to be treated with respect. A gallon of gas, which can propel a moped for over a hundred miles, can kill and destroy if not used properly. Never clean your moped with gasoline. Inside a garage or house, its fumes can cling to the ground where they may find a pilot light or other ignition source. Safe cleaning materials are available. It didn't take Mike very long to become an expert moped driver. He really got what he wanted.